Uh, we've got a, a lot of people working in the area, but also out of respect for um, the uh, citizens. Excuse me. <clears throat> The citizens that lost, you know, everything they ended up, you know, last night. Trying to recover an emotional day for many as they realize just how much they lost in yesterday's storms. You always you see things like this on TV and you think, you know, it's, it's tragic, but it'll never happen to me. But it does happen to you. ABC 13 has team coverage surveying the damage. I was scared to death. A special edition of ABC 13 News at 6 after the storm starts now. You're watching ABC 13, news coverage you can count on. This is ABC 13 News at 6. This is a look overhead at the damage from last night's storms. This drone video comes from Elon, one of the hardest hit communities. Good to have you with us tonight at 6. We have team coverage with the very latest on the damage. Danner Evans is anchoring our coverage from Elon and Amherst County. ABC 13's Carrie Beal, Whitney Burney, and ITN East McMiller are at some of the hardest hit areas, but let's turn our attention and begin with Danner. Danner. Mark, you just saw that drone footage over Elon, this area that was hit so hard. But to be here on the ground, it looks like a bomb went off in this Amherst County community. Just look at all the shrubs that are there. Treetops just cut off midway. And you can see this house behind me here. The front part of it intact, but really the rest of the house is gone. And that's what so many of the houses look like in this Elon community tonight. About 20 to 26 homes destroyed in that tornado that hit last night. I saw the National Weather Service. We passed them as we were walking down this road here tonight. They were assessing the damage to see just how much of an impact this tornado had on this community. They've been in our community all day. They've been in Campbell County. They've been in Lynchburg, and they ended their day here in possibly the hardest hit area here in Amherst County. And just take a look down the street here debris piled up on the side. Amherst County says they have secured dumpsters so these people can begin to go through all of their things, throwing away the debris so they can begin the uh, building process. The Amherst County Public Safety Director also says Virginia State Police will be here all night long securing this area so nobody comes in because they've already lost so much. And I'll tell you what, they were very emotional behind the, the podium today, both the sheriff and, and uh, the public safety director, Gary Rokes. It's been an emotional 24 hours. Think about it. It was just 24 hours as we were watching George Flickinger tell us the storm was coming. 24 hours ago, these people didn't think their lives were going to change to the magnitude they have. This Elon community here in Amherst County, the worst hit, as I said. ABC 13's Carrie Beal talked to a homeowner. Guess what? He went off for 10 minutes to go pick up the kids. And when he came home, he found his home was gone. It's a terrible sight. When you're coming back and you see, you looked where your house was, and it's not there. David Childress came back to a demolished house and found his wife and son in distress. She said that. Um, she actually saw the house lifting up. She was on the main floor and she saw the wall coming in and the wall actually hit her. And then she hollered out for our oldest son Bryson and she actually found him, the, the storm had actually thrown him out into the yard. And so uh, he was unconscious. His family, one of many here to experience devastation. So that's where it was? Yes. And that's where it is now? Correct. So it's upside down right now? Yep. Luckily, no one was hurt. To our home, the brick off this side and up an attic, you can see a hole and on the other side. We're very fortunate to be alive. A feeling so many here share. The house we can replace, but our family we can't. Now there are two main neighborhoods here. That's one that's not far away. It's really around the corner. We are over in the Elon community that's off of Route 130 that was now clear tonight, traffic is flowing, but I'll tell you what, they really do not want people coming by and gawking at this because they've got a lot of work to do. We spoke with one homeowner over here who says that he was trapped inside his home for about an hour. Can you imagine that? His roof was blown off and the sides of the walls came crashing in on him. Gosh, this guy got lucky. His neighbor came over and helped him get out. That uh, door right there come in on me. And I didn't realize until later on that the roof was gone. 
until I looked up. And like I said, that boy come over and help me get, help me get, get me out of there. He managed to get upstairs where his neighbor put a ladder and then brought him to safety. And luckily, he only had a few minor cuts and scrapes, nothing serious. Again, luckily, no one was hurt here. There were six people that were injured in this community, none of them seriously. And that is really the thing that neighbors are very, you could see them earlier this evening. They were all gathered in the streets, some of them even smiling a little bit. You think they might be crying, but they, they told me, you know, nobody died. Nobody was seriously injured. We have so much to be thankful for. Let's move now to Campbell County, where some of the worst storm damage also happened there. ABC 13's Whitney Burney joins us live from that neighborhood now. Whitney. Danner, I'm in a neighborhood off of Water Lake Road. Take a look at some of this damage. This is a huge down tree that came down in one of the neighbor's yard. And if you look up a little bit higher, you can see that their entire roof is gone. There's less than half of the shingles that are normally there that are still there. And if you look down the road a little bit further, you can see that a lot of these cars have windows that were shattered. You can see the roof is a little bit crumpled. And this is what the large part of this neighborhood looks like today. Neighbors here say that they didn't have much time to prepare and take cover last night. They say shortly after the warning came through to their phones, the storm tore through the neighborhood. They walked outside to see shattered windows, cars turned over, down trees, and even trailers thrown. Neighbors say that in just a matter of minutes, their home sustained thousands of dollars in damages. They say they've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, it was so scary. Just something you don't expect to really happen. We don't get tornadoes that often here. This morning, dozens of people showed up to the neighborhood to pitch in and help clean up. Neighbors say with the amount of damage to their area, it'll likely take weeks to repair. The people in this neighborhood say that they're just happy that everyone made it out. Live in Campbell County, Whitney Burney, ABC 13 News. A sentiment a lot of people are echoing tonight, Whitney. Now let's go to Danville, where a whole lot of people are cleaning up debris just like this today. ABC 13's Itanese McMiller is live in Danville now with what she's seeing. Danner, check out what was left here on Golf Club Road. You can see this massive tree is about 150 years old and it just missed this home. You can see that the tree ripped out of the ground and its roots stand almost as tall as I am. And it's just one of the many spots we found. I was scared to death. You know, I thought it was my last day. Ed Neal was home alone when he got word the tornado was headed right towards him. I got an eerie feeling it's coming this way. His neighborhood took the burn. I thought the roof of the house was flying off. Neal says the storm only lasted about 30 seconds. After it passed, he realized the roof to his home was still intact. That's heavy. But he got a big surprise when he walked outside. And I saw the top of the stable here was blown off. Neil isn't the only one in the neighborhood affected. It was just kind of like leaking, um, but then like it got wetter and the roof started falling off. Joelle Bray and her family were home when the storm peeled off a portion of their home. Like my mom, before we ran downstairs, she said, oh my gosh, it's hailing. But it was just like all the insulation um, that was, so we were upstairs, I guess, when the roof was flying off. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Although the neighborhood is shattered, both Neil and Bray say the community's support is keeping them together. Everybody was stopping off the streets, uh, seeing if we were okay, which that's really the most important thing is that we're okay. For those of you in Danville hitting the road tonight, there are a few road closers. West Overdrive near James Road will be closed throughout the night and into tomorrow. There are as well as Washington Street at First Street. There are down trees with electrical wires wrapped around them, so try to avoid those roads if you can. Reporting live in Danville, I'm Denise McMiller, ABC 13 News. Many of us also now going 24 hours now with no power. I'm right there with you folks. You can see the Appalachian Power outage map 
lit up tonight. Thousands of people without power at this hour. Stay with us. We're going to talk live with Appalachian Power later in the show, get you an update on where they are in the process in restoring your power. We've also been getting a great look at the damage from your pictures, like this one that Jonathan Owens sent us from John Scott Drive in Lynchburg. Look at that damage. If you want to see, send us your pictures or videos, all you have to do is go to ABC 13's news app and go to See It, Send It, the tab right there, and upload your pictures and video. We'd really like to share them with everyone else. Just make sure that you're in a safe place to do it. Now let's go live back to the studio with Mark. All right, Danner, thanks. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist George Flickinger right now to talk about what we saw yesterday. I was on Timberlake Road near the uh, Starbucks there, and I saw a couple of cars flipped over. Now it's got to be something strong when you can flip several thousand pounds of metal. Just uh, impressive to really look at the damage, especially how you go from no damage a few blocks away, and then as you make your way toward Greenview and Waterlegs, suddenly you're into, wow, look at all this impressive tornado damage, a very narrow path, but a very intense path of damage. Right, and you were with the National Weather Service, and they're trying to figure out just exactly how intense those storms were. Yeah, I want to show you some of the video from this from earlier today, and also I'm going to be showing you what I saw as far as the uh, tornado damage. When I was talking to the National Weather Service, when they were in the Waterlick area near Waterlick and Timberlake, the first damage that they saw, they said this would likely be somewhere in the EF1 range, probably the high end of the EF1 range. Now they are still out surveying, so we don't have the official report, but I can confirm that they will call this a tornado, which did hit in Lynchburg. And Mark, what's also interesting about this, this is the same storm which hit Danville, hit Gretna, it then hit Lynchburg, and then intensified, and it hit Elon as a major tornado at that time. It came through, bounced around, and took out a mm -hmm. lot of homes, unfortunately. We do have a quieter right. weather forecast, though, ahead, and we'll have that for you coming up. That is good to hear. We are back with team coverage on the other side of the break. ABC 13 Weather is brought to you by Wooldridge Heating Air Electrical. Right now, the National Weather Service is out surveying the storm damage. So far, we now have two reports of confirmed tornadoes, though they will definitely confirm also Lynchburg as well as the Amherst County tornado in Elon. The first tornado they confirmed was in Craig County. That's just northwest of Roanoke. This tornado was actually on the ground for less than one minute. However, during that time, six homes were damaged. It was a wide but a short lived tornado. This tornado was more significant in Rockingham County. That is just South of Danville. This particular tornado passed near Reedsville and it was on the ground for 17 miles. It was wider than two football fields and there were seven injuries, including when the tornado crossed, cro crossed the small community of Ruffin, North Carolina. So this is the tornado that made its way into Danville, later Pennsylvania County, and then reformed into another tornado in Lynchburg and also in Amherst County. We'll bring you the official reports when they come in later today or tomorrow morning. So check back with us for updates. I do have a lot of good news for you in the forecast because after you have some big storms, you certainly want some quieter weather. The most important thing is that we're going to be staying dry. So maybe if you did lose the roof of your home, not going to have to worry about any rain the next few days. Lots of afternoon sunshine coming up for tomorrow. It will be, however, a cool start to the day. If you set your plants outside today, bring them in tonight because we will see some patches of frost as we will be near freezing at 8 o'clock. But by lunch, we're in the mid 50s on the way toward the upper 50s during the afternoon. So it is going to be a very pleasant day for your Tuesday. We'll check on the next seven days and we'll show you the next 10. But over the next Seven, we're staying dry through Saturday, actually cooler than normal temperatures as we move in toward the weekend and nothing crazy on days eight, nine and 10 of our exclusive 10 day, but we are tracking a warm up into next week. All right, George, some good news there. A family in Amherst County is counting their blessings tonight. They say the tornado passed just behind their house. Will Stafford is live in Amherst County tonight with more. Will. Mark Greg Fresher says that earlier this afternoon or earlier last night when the storm came through, he and his wife got to the basement as soon as they could. However, they still took some damage in their home. He said he could hear the whistling from their basement as the storm passed them by. According to Fresh Hour, the storm only lasted around 10 minutes, appearing to only pass just behind the house in the field. Fresher's house was damaged, but it was mostly cosmetic damage. 
it doesn't even come to comparison with uh, what's happened to all those people losing homes and losing large portions of their homes. So we're very blessed and thankful that we were spared through this. If you want to come back out to me live, you can tell from our photographer, Tony, Tony and Danner have been out in this area all afternoon long. And as you can tell, the damage got much worse the closer to Elon that you got. And National Weather Service will get an EF rating here very shortly, which will probably be in that EF2 or EF3 range. Again, that's just an estimation on my part from what I've seen out here from this afternoon. They'll get the official ruling out later on this evening. But until then, we again estimate it's probably going to be an EF2 or an EF3. But again, when we get that word, we'll pass it along to you. We're live in Amherst. County, Will Stanford, ABC 13 News. And coming up, opening their doors, the resources available tonight for those who don't have power or have damage to their homes. I'm Dana Evans, live in Amherst County here in the Elon community off of Route 130. You can see the American flag waving there in the breeze tonight in this community that has been torn apart by a tornado that hit just about 24 hours ago. A lot of these people seeking shelter tonight here in Elon and in Campbell County as well. ABC 13's Valencia Jones is set up at Thomas Road Baptist Church where they're offering shelter tonight. Thomas Road Baptist Church and Red Cross volunteers say they're ready and waiting to welcome folks with open arms. They opened the doors of the shelter last night, taking donations and providing a place for those devastated by the storms sweeping through the area yesterday. Volunteers are providing lodging, showers, food, water, and medicine. Organizers say not many people have come just yet, although they've taken up lots of donations, but as power outages continue, they want everyone to know they have a place to go. We're told the shelter will be open as long as needed and through Wednesday at least. Live in Lynchburg, Valencia Jones, ABC 13 News. One of the positives to come out of this, so many people stepping up to help each other. Go to WSET.com right now and to our ABC 13 News app to see more on how you can help those affected by the storms. There are a lot of ways you can do it right now and in the days and weeks to come. Now let's send it back to the studio with Mark. All right, Dan, our thanks. Let's get the latest on power outages right now. Teresa Hamilton Hall with Appalachian Power joins us on the phone. Teresa, what's the situation looking like now for customers here in Lynchburg? Good evening, Mark. Uh, currently, we have about 10,500 customers without power across Virginia, and nearly all of those outages are concentrated in the Lynchburg, Amherst, and Campbell County areas. And so what's the timetable to get people connected so they have power? With the exception of areas with extreme and isolated damage, the goal is to get everyone restored by midnight Wednesday, and that includes customers in Lynchburg, Amherst, and Campbell County. In the Lovingston area, the goal is Tuesday, 6 p.m. For all other areas, restoration is expected by midnight tonight. Those areas would include Fielddale and Woodlawn. All right, Teresa Hamilton Hall, thanks very much for the update. We're back with more right after this. Now from ABC 13 News, this is the Toyota Sports Desk. Hi everybody, I'm Dennis Carter with School Out Today. A large group of EC Glass athletes from several different sports came together to help out their neighbors in need following yesterday's devastating storms. The cleanup and recovery efforts are just getting started with all the destruction left behind. Area athletes and coaches were out helping to clean up in some of the hard hit areas across the street from Oakwood Country Club, including Peakland Place and Oakwood Place. I think it's good for us to get out and, um, and, and, and give back to so many folks that have given to us. And, and you know, we, 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 got the, we got the manpower, we got the back strength, so let's get to work. It's amazing, man, like being able to help your community, it's amazing. It's very rewarding, I love looking out for my community. Um, just like to help people. I just want to say thank you for everyone who is coming out today and to help us. I really thank you and, and God bless you guys. Good job by everybody helping out. We'll be right back. All right, need something warm to wear in the morning. Also bring your plants in tonight as we'll be near freezing on your Tuesday morning. All right, we are back here at 7 with the very latest and then at 11.